Welcome to the Polymath Project. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. This week, we're going to focus on the body, on connecting to the breath, on movement, activity, and physical exercise, which, as we all know, has been a challenge for many, given that gyms are closed and parks are closed and these stay-at-home orders have put us in a different lifestyle, essentially but that doesn't mean we have to be immobile. And naturally, this is a health crisis. It's all about how do we maintain and build our health and immunity during this time. So we want to do everything possible not to go backwards in that regards. That being said, I am very pleased to welcome our first guest of the week, Noam Gamadi. He's a mind-body wellness practitioner, multidisciplinary, Techniques such as Feldenkrais, nonviolent communication, Reiki, and other types of body work he's studied, and he's integrated them all into a practice that I can vouch for firsthand. So I'm pleased to have Noam on the show today to offer us some tools and tips on how we can stay active and be mindful during these challenging times. Noam Gamadi, welcome to the Polymath Project. Good to see you today. Nice to see you, Alman. Thank you for having me. Now, where do we find you on this lovely day? I see some uh, some wonderful nature, and uh, you're you're outdoors. Looks like a nice space. Well, I'm out here in Prospect Park, Brooklyn, New York City. One of my favorite spots to tune in and to connect both with myself and with my surrounding. Hmm. And obviously, we have this current shelter-in-place quarantine going on during the the COVID pandemic, and that's the first thing I wanted to ask you. A lot of people aren't getting out or scared to get out, can't get out for different reasons. Uh, What's your your perspective on the current situation? From my perspective, there's definitely a shift right now that's happening, and there's much more pressure to be indoors and to comply and it resonates. On the one hand, we do have a responsibility both to ourselves and to the people around us. Having said that, there is room for, in my experience, for choice and to make sure that you're following the guidelines, keeping a distance, social distancing at the same time, understanding yourself and your needs so that you can feel more at ease during this time. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I know people have been struggling with that. Um, have, you been, have you been going out and about uh, you know, the whole time? Did you give it a week or two when, when the panic started settling in, which we're about seven or eight weeks in now? The first, three weeks were full on quarantine, disconnected from everyone and everything. And over time, I have created my own guidelines to some degree, which, as I was saying earlier, honor everyone else, but at the same time, also use my common sense, what is within reason. So here I am in nature, there's no one within close proximity and therefore I allow myself to be a little more loose even in this conversation. Well, you know, I agree with you. I think that's wonderful. Obviously there's some mixed feedback or or perspective on whether, you know, what we're doing and how we're going about it is uh, the quote unquote right thing to do, but it's, it, it is the reality of what's happening Uh, today as we sit here at the end of April 2020. Uh, What do you think about this pandemic and and how it's different from previous situations, other natural, uh, different types of uh, disasters, so to speak, or emergency, states of emergency that we faced? So given my gray hair, I've been through a number of different events over the years. We've been through 9-11. We've been through the uh, 
housing crisis. We've been through Hurricane Sandy, but these were all local. They were contained. Yes, it was an interruption and there were some adjustments that had to be made. This is completely different. This is more, first of all, it's global. Second of all, there is no clear end in sight. We don't know what's going to be on the other side. So it's much more typical of trauma cases. You know where you're getting in or you may not know where you're getting in, but you have no idea what's going to be on the other side. And that is very different than previous experience, previous situations where there it was contained. Yeah. Yeah, and given the nature of your work, Noam, and uh, you know, I can attest firsthand to the power of what you do and the effectiveness um, as as a bioenergetics, multidisciplinary, uh, holistic, uh, you know, healer. It would be the word I would use, uh, although I know you don't you know, use use those terms. But your work is obviously a very personal work. It's one where you're helping people with their body, with their emotions, how everything connects, how we connect to ourselves, how has this uh, pandemic affected your work and your ability to be you know, of service and value to your clients? Well, to begin with, it has completely transformed my personal practice. I have been working with energy or this idea of energy flow using the body as a container, as a transmitter information coming in, information coming out, and how to clear that vessel so it, the information can go through or the energy can flow through. Historically, when a client would come in or in the past, the, my practice was mixed. On the one hand, I had people from all over the world using the internet, and then I had clients who would come directly to me and we would work using certain maps, like the chakra map, in which we identify where there is a blocking, where things are not flowing through. So take, for example, the pelvis or the lower region. A lot of it has to do with safety security. A person would come in and, yes, they're concerned about their financial well-being, their relationship. And we would work to see how to free up some of that block, blocked energy in the pelvis area so that it could, so that one could feel more at ease and more flow. And that creates a ripple effect from the individual perspective to the community as a whole. Because if, as we see right now, we're all feeling compressed and it's blocking us from the flow, from connection, from creating movement. Using these techniques, I can help a client free up some of that energy. Right now, I don't have that choice. Here we are speaking on the internet. Yet the tools are still similar tools. My perspective is coming from the inside, from the individual, clearing up that space and then expanding it to the surrounding. And that has stayed the same. So at this time, what I'm doing is basically using the opportunity to connect with people through the internet helping them to see using these maps that I use to see where they're blocked and how they can free up that space so that they can get back into movement. And in doing so through, let's say, Zoom and other you know, tools, WhatsApp, FaceTime, whatever it may be, um, how, I know it's still early, but how have you and others uh, mirrored back to you the experience? I mean, obviously, you know, compared to doing a session in person, versus you know through the tech is a different experience we can all attest to that but um i mean could you put a percentage on it do you think it's like 50 percent as effective just as effective uh, what's your feeling so far about that 
what I'm finding is that it's a matter of adjustment. The effectiveness is just as effective. The experience is different. Hands-on, no, you can't replace hands-on, clearly. But given the circumstances, you can still sense using the breath, using sound, using movement, where there is holding. And holding is a result of trauma, it's a result of injuries. And when you can identify where it stems from or where it's blocked, you can guide people to release. So Zoom is just another tool that allows me to communicate with people how to release their blockages. And given that uh, now is a time of you know, high stress in general, you know, collectively, and, and obviously each individual has their own choice how to, to deal, can you give a few practical tips, solutions that let's say can apply to everyone, what we can do you know, at this moment in time? Yes. You know the old saying that they say in airlines, put the mask on yourself before you put it on anyone else? Yeah. That holds true during this period. The tendency is to think about everyone around us, how to save them from their experience. And there are some real threats right now. Financial stability. The children are at home. We don't have space. There is, there are quite a lot of holdings going on. And on a practical level, there are certain solutions that work. Take for example, getting out into nature. Yes, it's restricted and not everyone can do it. But if you can get out there, you basically allow yourself to create movement. And ultimately, life is movement. So movement is definitely one of the tools that we have available. Breathing techniques. Our breath basically informs the nervous system. Am I feeling safe or am I feeling unsafe? We're going to explore it later on, but breath is definitely one of the tools that we can rely on in order to move that energy. The so, so far we have movement, breathing. We have movement, we have... Oh. Okay, we're going to have to do some... So, okay, going back to some of the solutions. For example, dance, yoga, all these activities which create movement are some of the tools that we have available, even during this time. Awareness, meditation, tuning in and using this time to reclaim or regain our perspective. Yep, what are we gonna do during this time? We're going to prepare, we're going to learn new tricks so that when this is over, we have something new to offer. So yeah. my perspective yeah. is to look for tools, look for ways how to move the energy. Yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly and obviously, um, we can complain about the restrictions we have or we can you know, work with what we do have available. And thankfully at this time, because of you know, this type of technology and for the last whole bunch of years, there's been a number of apps as well that help with things like meditation uh, for those that don't have other means or, or don't wanna go out or have time to go out to classes. There's, there's all types of ways, um, you know, as you said, to use music and different tools to get the guidance now can you offer something specific right now, an exercise uh, that you know, the audience could uh, venture to, to take on? 
Yes, what I'm going to suggest or offer everyone watching this broadcast is to work with the breath. And we're going to use two types of breath. We're going to use a breath called diaphragmatic breathing, which is pushing the breath down. As you can see, the solar plexus, the area between the rib cage and the abdomen and paradoxical breathing, which is primarily in the chest. So I'm going to begin by inviting you to take a few deep breaths and I'm going to join you breathing That's from true. the nose, sending it all the way down towards the ground. I know you're on a pretty high floor, so it might take a while, but sending it all the way down to the ground. You can put your hand on the lower abdomen between the belly button and the pubic bone, just to notice if what you think you're doing is what you're actually doing. So as you breathe in, allow your abdomen to fill And as you exhale, open your mouth like a lion. Now, how do you know if you're doing the right thing? Take the two small fingers and just place them in your mouth to see. Make sure to wash your hands beforehand. <laughs> Make sure that you're actually doing what you think you're doing. Because many of us, think we've got a mouth open but we're really restricting the breath so breathing from the nose sending it all the way down towards the ground it goes through the chest the heart the lungs it pushes into the diaphragm the abdomen and as you exhale Open breath and just letting it go. Some of the benefits of working with this breath is you're promoting calm. It's like an interior massage. You are helping the circulation. You're helping inform the nervous system safe or not safe. And basically, you are tapping into the movement. The breath is always present. When we are breathing, we're not focused on what happened yesterday or what will happen tomorrow. Our mind may want to take us there, but go back to the attention on the breath. So breathing in from the nose. and allowing yourself to exhale. I'm going to invite us also to do a bit of a scan. And this scan you can do sitting up, you can do it lying down. Some people prefer to have their knees bent and their legs standing while they're lying down. Others want the legs straight. But if you're sitting, just Feel free to close your eyes and just begin to sense your contact with the floor. Notice your feet on the floor, the contact of the feet with the floor. Gently bringing your attention up. Your knees are approximately shoulder width apart. The knees ideally in a 90 degree angle, the legs are 90 degree angle, so your knees over the heel. Your mind may wander and it's okay, just think of it as clouds, bring yourself back to the breath. the sounds around you, the sensation, the temperature in the room.
and gently bring your attention towards the pelvis, the pelvis and the hips. If you're sitting on a chair, are you sitting more on one sitting bone than the other? Without changing anything, without fixing anything, just scanning and noticing what you're experiencing. And now notice your breath. How it comes in through the nose, the temperature of the breath coming in. Going through the throat, into the chest, the heart, expanding the rib cage and going down pushing on the diaphragm, feel your abdomen expanding and exhale. And begin to sense if there are any areas which are restricted at this time. Maybe your chest, your shoulders, Is one shoulder higher than the other, closer to the ceiling? Is one shoulder more forward than the other? And as you're doing it, allow your thoughts to come by and go back to the breathing. This scan really helps us be present in the moment. It allows us choice. And as we come back into the screen, into this moment, this is something you can do at any time, any place. Oh. Yeah, you're feeling the anxiety. You need more space. There's kids around, homeschooling. And it gets to us, no matter how good a parent you are, how can you tune in? Yeah, I think it's wonderful. And uh, even in that moment, as I joined you and in it, I feel calmer. I feel more grounded, more centered, and more in tune. And as you noted, it's a challenging thing to do, especially at this time, but really any time, even in the normal flow of life when we are out and about, it's, one could argue, even more challenging because we're constantly going from one place to another and not necessarily moving with awareness. Um, and so that was wonderful guidance that you just gave. Would you recommend for folks to do it with guidance or, you know, obviously learn how to do it the way you're teaching us here and then apply it, you know, to themselves at any, at any time. To me, the idea is experiential, how to bring things into the experiential and these breathing exercises. Right now we focus primarily on the, on the diaphragmatical breathing, it allows you to center. So whether you listen to a guided meditation or take a couple of minutes during the day to tune in, notice where you're feeling the discomfort. Is your breath free? Is it restricted? Is your chest open? Are your shoulders tight? So this is a practice that one ideally cultivates over time. In the beginning, you're not sure, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Over time, it doesn't matter anymore. Just keep doing it. Take a few minutes during the day. When you get up, when you go to bed. Sometimes I use it when I'm 
in a stressful situation. I'm about to get into a Zoom conversation and I can feel the pressure building. Okay, what am I gonna do? Just take a few breaths. Yeah, I think that's, it can be used any time and it's always gonna be for our benefit. And even in the midst of a meeting or a situation, we can stop or continue with whatever the interaction is, but bring the mindfulness into, into our breath, into our body, so that we can be more present in that interaction while it's even happening. Couldn't agree more. Ultimately, if we are contracted, if we are stressed, how does it impact our surrounding? How we relate to each other? Are we nurturing ourselves? Are we able to reclaim our present moment? Or are we operating out of fear and anxiety, which this period is definitely challenging us? Sure, it sure is. Uh, now, I know, Noam, that uh, you're giving us a lot of practical tools here, which is fantastic. As you know, a part of the Polymath Project is you know, having you know, thought leaders and folks like yourself that are uh, not just, we're not here just talking, we're actually taking an active role in trying to uh, offer solutions that uh, all of humanity, anyone participating willingly can do something to make a change you know, in their own life and the lives of others. And within that, we like to you know, invite our guests to offer a challenge to the audience. Can you, on the spot now, come up with something um, that you can offer uh, as a challenge and see who's willing to take it on? So before we, I go into the challenge, I just want to thank you in advance, or in the present, not in advance, in the present, for putting this project together. I think it's an amazing project, which is really solution-based. It is not just a theory. You're using the tools that you've been sharing for years and honing in. You bring thought leaders, you bring practitioners, you bring all these people that have certain experience and can share, especially during this time, to help other people. I appreciate that. I really do. And, and having you here and, and really starting this effort during this moment just felt like the right thing to do. So let's, uh, let's continue. Let's continue doing it as a, a community of warriors and learned practitioners of different disciplines, just bringing, bringing together different angles because you never know what's going to connect with different people. Different people will connect and resonate with different things. So bringing a multitude of them together, I think will hopefully offer everyone something they can take forward. Absolutely. So talk about a challenge. Let's talk a little bit about what we can do during this time. Let me just check in with myself before I move forward. What I'm going to invite us to do and I'm including myself in this exercise. It's something that I do on a regular basis. I'm going to challenge you and everyone else to take inventory. And what, how are we going to take that inventory? We're going to resort to the exercise we did before, which is really tuning in, taking seven minutes of your day to connect with your breath, to do a scan, to notice what's going on with you. And notice, begin to notice. I look at the body as a, as I was saying in the beginning, it's a battery basically, or a energy reservoir. There are certain things that diminish the energy or leave us depleted. And then there are things that charge our battery. 
So as you're doing the scan, begin to notice, scan your day. What, what happened during the day? Certain activities that charged your battery, such as, I don't know, for me, it's getting out into the park or having an interesting conversation like we're having right now. Hmm. Yep, that's charging my battery. And then what are some of the things that are actually depleting my battery? Take, for example, an argument. Does that charge your battery or deplete your battery? Clear. <laughs> so the invitation is to tune in, use the breath, use the scan to see. When you think of an argument that you had I don't know, in the past week, maybe you're one of the lucky ones that didn't. I definitely have found myself in uncomfortable situations. And when I think of that a specific situation, I can feel my chest compressed. I can feel my abdomen getting tight. And using the breath, I can also release it. So the challenge is to take inventory to see what fills, what depletes. And really, once you're clear on what fills or depletes, now you can begin on focusing on what charges your battery, what fills your reservoir so that you can be, put the mask on yourself, as we said earlier, and hold the space for the people around us. Try it for a few days, see what happens, and definitely let us know. Okay, so seven minutes a day, finding some space and scanning oneself, one's thoughts. I think it's a fantastic challenge. It doesn't seem like seven minutes would be too difficult to take out, but as we all know, just like with exercise or anything, the consistency, creating the space, protecting that space is its own challenge in and of itself. Uh, but I appreciate you putting that challenge forward and I invite everyone who's listening in to take it on for, as Noam said, a few days a week. And if you can integrate it as part of your daily routine, not just during the pandemic, but you know, for, for the rest of your life when things go back to whatever, whatever normal is going to be uh, when, when it does. No, I'm committing. Yeah. Committing to gratitude. You were asking earlier about what can we do. You can focus on the limitations or alternatively, you can focus on the possibilities. Gratitude is a great way for us to self-connect. What am I grateful for? Oh, wow, I'm in nature. I'm grateful for it. I've had a good conversation. Wow, that's charging my battery. Identifying what works. I really appreciate that. I'm grateful uh, to have you on today and to have uh, you know, not just your beautiful uh, teaching here, but uh, some nice scenery there, outdoor scenery uh, in the background. I'm here in Jersey City where the parks are closed and it's difficult to get that access, but uh, I'm not complaining. There's other ways to get out and about and to move outside of Jersey City a little bit. There's, there's plenty of greenery around uh, other areas of New Jersey. Actually, Liberty State Park, uh, not too far down, is open. Uh, Noam, how can folks that want to learn more about what you do, you know, find you, connect with you? So, in terms of finding me, there is Instagram. It is actually under Avinom Gamadi. There is Facebook. Same thing, Avinom Gamadi. And then there's my personal website, www.noamgamadi.com. And reach out, send a direct message. I'd love to hear where people are at at this time, where they're holding, and if there's any way to free up some of that holding, join me.
Fantastic. Well, as I noted earlier, I could, you know, vouch for, you know, what Noam does, you know, firsthand. And that's why I've invited him here to share, you know, his gifts with, with others. So again, Noam, thank you so much, you know, for being here and let's continue this journey. Aman, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. You will, my friend. Take care.